calculation could call this function. All right? So it does an operation. You know, we could have a function, or in Excel, they have a function to calculate the square root, for example. We're going to write a function to calculate a temperature conversion. All right? Now, functions have two things associated with them. Um, in fact, let's talk about uh, a, a function's signature. All right? What, is, what do I mean when I say a function's signature? Okay, that's part of it, the inputs that are required. What's a full signature for a function? The name of the function, what inputs are required, and what it's going to produce. All right? So, for example, in Excel, we have a square root function. I could go in there and put in Give me the square root of cell A1. Or I could say, give me the square root of 144, or whatever. What's the signature of this function? Well, the name of the function in Excel is square root. The argument that it takes is either a cell reference or a numeric expression of some kind or the other. And what does it give me back? It gives me back a number. So if we were going to document this, would have function name, square root. Arguments actually are either a cell reference or a numeric expression And what it returns is a number. Now, how many of you know how to calculate a square root manually? I mean, other than, by manually, I don't mean using your hands to press a calculator. <laughs> all right? Or if it's like an, an even one, like 9 or something like that. If I said, you know, 2,323. What is the square root of that? Could you calculate it? No, I couldn't. I might have been able to at one point. I, yeah, exactly. That might have been an assignment in school, and maybe I, I knew how to do it then. But I don't know how to do that now. Does that keep me from using the square root function in Excel? Absolutely not. Why? Because the way a function works is, to the outside world, you shouldn't need to know the details of it. You should just know the signature. In other words, how do I use this function? The signature is sort of a guide to how to use a function. So, what name do I call the function? What do I have to give it? And what am I going to get back? So, name is square root. I have to give it either a cell reference or a numeric expression. And I'm going to get back a number. All right? Functions can take an argument. What do I mean by an argument? I mean square root. Square root of what? All right. Reason for an argument is to make the function generic. Right? We wouldn't want to have a different function for each different number. That'd be absurd, right? Here's the square root of one function. Here's the square root of two function. Here's the square root of three function. All right. We have a generic square root function that accepts the argument that contains a number, it does the operation on that argument, and gives me the results. So functions have, besides the name, the other two parts of the function are the arguments. That's what the function is going to do its thing on. All right? And the return value. A function can accept multiple arguments. My square root example is only accepting one argument, but a <coughs> function could accept multiple arguments. A function, however, can only return one of something. All right? Now, as you get more involved in programming, that something can become more and more complex. So usually when we think of functions, like the function we're going to do in this class and the square root function, 
we're talking about returning a what's called a primitive, a simple variable type, like a number, a date, um, a boolean, uh, a string. All right, but it could be returning an object. We could write a function that returned a image object. All right. Now, an image object has a bunch of properties to it. That doesn't violate, though, the statement that a function can only return one thing. Because what the function is returning is not those properties individually. It's returning one image object. And it just so happens that image object has a bunch of properties associated with it. Now, my Fahrenheit to centigrade, or my, actually, this isn't a Fahrenheit to centigrade. This is a temperature conversion function. What arguments will this need to accept? Right. The temperature you want to convert. And what else? And how you want to convert it. And the type of conversion. What's this going to return? Yeah, the converted number. If a function is good, it will work as a black box. What do I mean by a black box? I mean that everything that the function needs either is inside the function or is passed to it as an argument. You could have a function called another function, couldn't you? Absolutely. Again, and it just sort of chains on down the line. In fact, we'll probably do that at some point in this example have a function call another function. Is our click event right now a good example of a black box? No. Why not? Because it has to know something outside of itself. It has to know the name of the text box on the page. That's not passed as an argument. That's not declared inside the function. All right. So it has to know that, it has to know the name of the label, it has to know the name of the drop-down, it has to know the name of the image, all those things it has to know, all right? A function is good if all we need to do is give it what it needs to do, and that's all the function needs. Anything else is contained inside the function. We give it what we want to give it, everything else is in here, and it spits out an answer. Again, think of the square root function. We don't have to know anything about how to calculate a square root to call the function. We just need to give it the right thing, give it the right argument. The reverse is true. The function doesn't care what we do with the result, right? We could, for example, use a square root function in another formula, right? We could use it to put the value in a cell. We could do a lot of things with the result of that function. The function doesn't care. The function simply gives the answer. Whoever called the function then decides what they want to do with it. All right? And that's our goal, for the function to get everything it needs from the outside, passed as an argument. Everything else it needs is built inside the function and doesn't refer to anything outside of the function, does its thing, returns a result. And then that result can do whatever um, you want with it. You know, think about it like uh, as being like, you know, the answer guy, all right, at a job that knows how to answer maybe one specific question. How much does it cost to ship a package? Well, the answer guy, to give you their answer, 
you have to tell it how much a package is going to, how much a package weighs, <coughs> where it's going to, and how soon it needs to get there. You give the, the package guy those three ans or those three values, the package guy will tell you how much it costs. All right. So you say, here's a package. It weighs a pound. I need to ship it to Boston, and it needs to be there next week. Package guy will look and say, dollar seventy-eight. All right. You have another package that weighs 10 pounds, it needs to be in California, and it needs to be there tomorrow. Package guy will look and say, $23. All right? You don't know how he calculated that, and you don't really care. You're just interested in his answer. What's more, this answer guy, you know, doesn't care what you do with the answer. <laughs> you might say, you know what, $23, that's too expensive. I'm not going to ship it out there tomorrow. I'll, I'll figure out another way to get them what they need. Or, in the case of Boston, if you say it's only $1.78 to get it there next week, well, hmm, how much would it cost if we want it there by Friday? So you take that answer and you do something with it. Package guy doesn't care, though, what you do with it. Package guy's job is simply to give you the answer, you do with it what you need. Likewise, in our case, our function is going to return a temperature, and we're going to do with it what we want. We might make a phrase and display that on the screen. We might display or hide different images, depending on what we want to do. But we're going to do what we want to with the output. The function's responsibility is simply to um, take the input, manipulate it, and return the output. Next time, we'll start talking about custom classes, because the next phase of this, after we've created a good function, is to move that to a, a, a custom class. So what we'll probably do is we'll probably rewrite this code using a function, talk about custom classes, then rewrite this code using a custom class. All right, we'll see you uh, either in lab or Thursday.